Grove, and welcome to the stock-specific uh, class here for Thursday, October the 27th. If you have any questions during the week or any questions I don't get to here in the live class, make sure you send those to jerry at traderspro.com. Um, not too much has changed uh, from the Tuesday update. Uh, we're still in kind of a critical area here. Um, where the, the market could uh, start to, to pull back. Um, but I'm not seeing any, uh, although I, I saw, we saw a little bit of a bearish reversal candle yesterday. We'll look at the charts here in a second. And there could be one that's, that's in the process of forming today. Uh, there's other factors that have made this transition here a little bit less murky or a little bit more murky, a little bit less clear. Um, and so uh, it's still caused me to kind of be in a situation where I'm kind of waiting. Um, I did make a couple adjustments to the portfolio. I'll talk about those uh, after the, the market update portion. Um, I don't know that I'm going to be looking to enter into any new trades today uh, just because of this kind of critical area. Well, we'll talk about it. Let, let's jump in and, and get into the direction alerts. Direction alerts, not much different from from uh, Tuesday's update. Uh, momentum has moved up a little bit into this area here. Again, what we're really looking for are extremes, overbought, oversold. Um, we are starting to creep up into a little bit of an overbought stage. Um, so even if you believe that the, the market is has a lot more upside and, and uh, that, that we bottomed out, if that's your, your belief and what you think, um, we could start to be getting into a little bit of an overbought condition, which you'd have to be a little bit cautious about. But we're not there yet. So this is telling me we can still go either way, uh, depending on, on what the, the trend is, is telling us and showing us. Uh, breadth is is right in the middle, so it could, again it could go either way. It's not uh, it, it's not showing any extreme. Uh, uh, sentiment is still in the extreme com complacency area, um, but it's been that way back and forth. It's barely gotten into the high area. It's it's almost pretty much lived in this extreme area. But again, this it gets back to what I've been talking about for a long time now, which is that that we've got to see. We've got to see that break. We've got to see that that complacency. The market just isn't afraid right now or showing any fear of a bigger sell-off. And and you, you got to see that in order to get a solid bottom. in, you got to you got to see some fear. I mean, it, it hasn't even moved into the trending area. Um, uh, you know, we just haven't seen any fear at all um, in, in the market for quite some time. We've seen some concern. The VIX has spiked up above 30 a, a couple times. Um, but even then, as we've gotten up into, you know, 35 area on the VIX, it's it's uh, it's led to rallies that have taken place. And I think um, what's going to happen eventually is we're going to move up into that 35 area. People are going to start buying assuming that the market is going to start rallying at that point and then it's going to spike. Um, um, but again, these are all, you have to understand if you're brand new to this and you're listening to me for the first time, <clears throat> I'm a, I care really about what the current chart is showing me, what the current price action is showing me. Um, that's what I make my decisions on. Um, but what I also do, though, is I look at things down the road. I look at uh, what could be forming, what, what chart patterns could be forming that could show up later on. Um, you know, I, I might even bring in some, some fundamental reasons. Uh, you know, obviously the Fed is something that's being talked about a lot, and what the Fed is doing. And, um, you know, I, I think about these things and I pay attention to these things. I may, com I may offer my opinions on what I think could be going on or what you have to be uh, worried about. Uh, but I think it's important to, because these are just, it's like anybody. It's like anyone on CNBC. They'll, they'll, they spout off what their opinions are, but uh, again, what matters is what actually is happening and taking place. If you can't trade what's actually going on and what's actually taking place, meaning I could be as bullish as I want to be, but if the market is declining, I got to recognize that that's the reality. That's what is going on. If I can't trade that or, implement that into my decision-making process, then, um, then I'm going to get beat up in, in the market. So 
uh, just be aware of that, um, especially when I start getting off the chart, talking about charts. The charts are really what I am going to base my decisions on, you know. But you know, I may I may back up that expectation of the chart analysis with other things like you know, in, in, uh, interest rate hikes, jobs reports that come up, uh, you know, all the the stuff that. It's kind of the news that we we uh, deal with on a daily basis, but I'm not going to base my decision uh, on whether to enter a trade or exit a trade off of the noise out there, off of this other stuff. Uh, but I think it's important to kind of um, um, well, the way I, the, the the analogy I use is kind of like game planning for a, a football game, where you're trying to anticipate what the the defense is going to do if you're on offense or what the offense is going to do if you're on defense you you watch the film you look at their tendencies you you look at hey when they line up this way they're more likely to throw the ball they line up this way they're more likely to run the ball um it doesn't mean that you know what's going to happen next but you're prepared you're prepared you you you've looked at all the different uh, probabilities and angles and so when something gets thrown at you, you have a better chance of dealing with it because you've already thought it out. So uh, sometimes what you'll hear me do is I'll talk about bullet reasons why I think the market could go up. And I'll give you, I'll point out different reasons. Uh, and then uh, at the same time, I might give you some reasons why the market could go down. It doesn't mean that I'm, I'm uh, can't make up my mind. It means that um, I'm trying to prepare myself for whatever happens. I, I'm going to be able to recognize it where I would recognize it. I'll try to point that out on the chart. If it if it drops below here, we've got to change our our mentality to be more bearish. If it goes above here, we we need to be a little bit more bullish. I'll I'll do things like that. So um, anyway, I'm just trying to introduce myself to some of the newer people that are joining in and, and trying to get used to. Uh, my personality, I am a little bit uh, uh, kind of a shoot from the hip type of uh, presenter, um, but uh, hopefully we have fun during the hour. All right, so again, sentiment's still high. We still need to see that break. You've got your buy-sell ratios having been closer together here, so they could expand, although we're seeing the buys start to outpace the sales. I'd be a little bit of a bullish sign right there, but we're not in any sort of extreme area here where, where we're really wide, uh, that you'd have to worry about some sort of a snapback in the opposite direction there. The, the sentiment indicator is getting getting close, though, to um, overbought. It's creeping up there, so we got to pay attention to that. Um, if it gets up into that red area there, it's... it's uh, signaling a higher probability of, of, a, of a market pullback of some sort. Uh, but we're not quite there yet, but that is something to point out. We're getting pretty close. We're past that middle point that we've been in for a little while here. Let's get to the charts. Um, you know, a lot of this we've already kind of talked about, uh, you know, what we were talking about on 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 Tuesday was the, the potential of this being a bearish ABC pattern. Uh, we, we were counting kind of a five waves down, one, two, three, four, five, and this being A, B, C. Remember, this is where we're at on Tuesday right here. It looked like wave C is about the same length as wave A. I said it could, it could, be, you know, end up being a little bit longer than wave A. We could see it go market go up a little bit higher. Um, one of the key areas that I've been talking about for a while is the 389 area it, it is a major resistance. We got pretty close uh, with yesterday's intraday high, not quite there, but you know, you could say that could be close enough. If you look at the price action, um, let me zoom in a little bit closer here with a three-month chart to, to analyze yesterday's price action here. You can see we opened lower than where we where we closed on Tuesday. We tried to rally. We rallied higher here, so the buyers pushed the price up a little bit higher, and then look, we faded into the close, meaning they weren't strong enough to hold the price up there. Now that is a a sign of, of uh, buying exhaustion that's showing us uh, some signs of buying weakness, but it, it's not the strongest um, reversal signal. Um, 
it, well, it's not the strongest reversal signal in the context of where it happened. What I like, what, this is called a shooting star candlestick formation. Uh, where I like to see it or where it's most effective is when it's above the previous day, meaning you open higher. Um, anytime you open higher and it fades into the close and you close lower than where you open, um, it's always a stronger bearish reversal signal. It's one of the strongest ones when that happens. Um, but I like to see it open, open above the previous day's price action and then have have that rally that comes back down whether it closes higher or lower i prefer it to close lower than the open but that's that's the stronger um shooting star candlestick formation you can see it looks about the same as what happened yesterday but if it was up here um and especially if it would have like rallied up to that 389 area and then pulled back from it that really would have been a strong bearish reversal but um we are seeing some weakness today. Um, uh, the, the thing I'm, what, what I'm seeing today though is a little bit more of a tug of war. We saw it a little bit yesterday too. Sometimes in that, when you get that buying exhaustion, um, you don't have the sellers yet. They haven't shown up yet. Um, all it's showing is buying exhaustion. Again, that can change. You could, you get a buyers that are, that are not real confident and then suddenly a news item comes out that makes them confident. <clears throat> and and suddenly it takes off again um now you know we're you, you could say okay well let's look ahead is there something that could cause buyers to become more confident well we do have apple and amazon earnings coming out after the bell um could that be a reason people hold on to as being confident you know that would be very short term i think um I can't see Amazon and Apple driving the market higher by themselves simply because you look at all the other FANG stocks, uh, Meta got destroyed today after their earnings report yesterday. Google got destroyed after its earnings report. Uh, Microsoft, you know, dropped dramatically after its earnings report. None of, you know, none of these stocks have, have, uh, have, have, uh, you know, have, uh, have really um, gotten the market excited in any way. And so obviously a Amazon and Apple are the two biggest ones of the group, but um, uh, you know, I just find it hard, especially after we've already rallied up to this point, I just find it hard for them to, to really fuel the next leg up. Now you could point out, go out a little bit further and say, okay, there's a, there's a, a fed meeting on Wednesday next week. Um, should we learn something there that caused the market to get a little bit more bullish? Yeah, that's always possible. Um, although I think what happened today is, uh, and this is why I don't understand, you know, especially the Dow's rally today or attempted rally today. Um, that GDP report came out is, is showing the, the economy is growing. Now, remember what I've been talking about for the last few weeks uh, in, in relation to the Fed and what the Fed is trying to do. Good news is going to be bad news. Uh, you can point to that and say, well, that's a, that's a reason to go in and buy. The, the, the economy, we're surviving this. We're, 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 we're not going to go into recession. We're going to grow. Well, remember, the Fed is trying to crush inflation. They are trying to slow the economy down. And the last thing they want to hear is that the economy is growing again or starting to uh, progress again, because all that's going to mean is inflation is going to get worse. Um, and so if you're if you're thinking they're going to they're going to stop their rate hikes because this news was good today it's just the opposite it means they're going to prolong them it could mean we already know that we're probably going to get a 75 uh, basis point hike um well we we the market's saying definitely next week we will i think it really believes that D december will be as well and then if if you know you start to continue to get good news you're pushing it into next year that uh, that first rate hike in the new year will be about, probably about the same. So um, the market's not reacting to that. And again, you wonder, does it realize that good news is bad news yet? And maybe it doesn't. I don't know. And maybe it won't. Um, that's another thing that we talk about all the time, which is, you know, we, we try to follow what the big institutional traders are doing and how they're thinking. They're the ones that move the market. I could I could disagree. I could think that uh, 
you know, why can't they see that uh, that uh, what's going to happen here is is likely that that uh, Chairman Powell is going to keep hiking? Um, it doesn't matter if they're buying right now. You know, at some point, I'm going to have to follow along with with what they're doing, or or it, the other alternative is just to sit out and not uh, not trust it. But um, we're not quite in the area yet where I would I would say we've we've got to just ignore um, uh, the, the future and what could happen and, and just uh, jump in and buy. We're still at kind of this critical spot of, of are we reversing? But what we've seen over the last couple of days is a little bit of this tug of war. And I think that could have, that could have something to do with some of these events coming up that the market is kind of just waiting for. Um, and it's, it's possible we just kind of see it stagnate until at least until next Wednesday, until that Fed meeting. There's been a tendency for it to do that over the last couple of Fed meetings, where if it hasn't moved significantly before that week, the the Fed week, it tends to just not do much on that Monday and Tuesday ahead of time. You also have next week, though, that Friday is the jobs report. You got the jobs report that Friday. That's going to have an impact on on what the Fed. Uh, well, the Fed's got to make their decision before that report comes out, but that could add to uh, the speculation of what they're going to do in December or January. And then you've got uh, the election the next week after that. So there's a lot of stuff that if you could point to triggers for things uh, in the next, uh, next few, few um, um, days and, and couple weeks here that, um, that could provide the quote unquote reasons for a move. Okay. Now, uh, one thing I do also want to caution you on a little bit is, um, you know, it's always whenever you deal with seasonality. Um, here's my opinion on seasonality. And what seasonality is, is it, there's there's a tendency for markets to make certain moves at certain times of the year. Um, you know, and, and the, one of the most famous ones is sometime in December. No one can ever pin down when the Santa Claus rally is supposed to take place, which makes it so ridiculous. But um, there tends to be the Santa Claus rally at the, at, as you get towards the end of the year that, that traders point to. Um, and what you're hearing a lot lately is that there tends to be a market rally at the midterm elections. Uh, there's a lot of these little things that the market, w that people will start pointing out. Um, can I just offer a little bit of a word of caution? Um, and that is that um, never base a trade off of seasonality alone. Kind of my, I don't, I'm not saying ignore seasonality because I think, I think uh, anything that can lead to a probability of a certain move should be recognized. But here, here's a, here's an example. It, you know, we're, we're, we're talking about a bearish, a possible bearish ABC pattern. We really don't have confirmation of it yet. Um, it, we could today, if we got a close below the low of the previous day, that's something I look for as a potential confirmation. But I'd like to see, a, you know, the, all the indexes showing a, a stronger bearish reversal. But let's say that, that it looks like we could be getting some some confirmation. Now, let's say that there's a, a probability, the chart is showing us a probability of a, maybe another drop down or another big drop down. But I look at the calendar and I say, oh, midterm elections are coming up, so the market has to go up. Um, I should be buying. I, I ignore the chart. I'm going to go buy uh, a bunch of these stocks because the, you know, everyone keeps talking about the, the midterm election rally. You're going to you're going to hammer. Maybe not this year, but some year, if you if you base your trade on something like that, you're going to get killed. Okay. Now, where would I use seasonality? Seasonality can be used as a secondary approach. Let's say that. Um, Let's say that we, we bust out higher and we get above that 389 area that I said is a kind of a key resistance area. We get above this high right here. So we really get another burst of a move uh, in the next couple of days. And then next week we get a little bit of a pullback, but it's more of a, a kind of looks like a bullish ABC pattern pullback. And then we're going into the week of, um, of the, uh, of the uh, elections and midterm elections. And I've got a bullish pattern right here, and we're going into the midterm elections. That's when I would say, okay, the seasonality is bullish, the chart is bullish. Yeah, let's buy some stuff and see what works. It might work out here in this situation. 
Okay. So, uh, you know, you, you, you have to have that approach uh, because of all the seasonality type things I've studied, um, none of them are absolute. <laughs> and, uh, and some of the ones that have a very high correlation, it always seems like the time that I go trade it is the time it doesn't work. The one time out of 20 years it didn't work. Um, it, it, I just, I just have over the years have just said, you know, I'm, I'm never going to make seasonality a, 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 a primary reason for a particular trade, but I'm also not going to ignore it, but I'm going to, I'm going to wait to see if it, if the seasonality agrees with the chart pack. So, um, and I'm just anticipating that I might be getting some, um, emails or, or comments about uh, the midterms coming up. Well, the midterms are coming up. Uh, it seems like every year, whenever there's an election, it's, Jerry, you're saying the market should go down, but the, but the election's coming up, or it's the Santa, what about the Santa Claus rally, you know? I remember one year, um, I had somebody that was so convinced that, that we were going to get a Santa Claus rally, but the chart was pointing to a drop, and we ended up getting a big drop in December, which is pretty rare. You don't usually get big, you don't usually get, you can get sell-offs in December, but you usually don't get like uh, panic sell-offs or, or uh, you know, really big um, sell-offs. So we ended up having one that year. And, um, you know, it's like, I feel sorry for all those people that just bought for Santa Claus, you know, <laughs> uh, ignoring the charts because the charts were pointing to that decline. All right, so that, that's kind of what I'm looking for. Um, you know, you're, there's also some resistance here I pointed out. Again, that's pretty close to that 389 area, though. Resistance, resistance, support, support, resistance. Is it going to be resistance here? We don't know. But if we break above that, we need to start turning a little bit more uh, bullish at that point. And that doesn't mean I would buy on a breakout there, but you'd, really what you'd want to see is what does the next pullback look like? So if we took off from here, you might recognize, okay, we're back, we're above 389, we're above this area of resistance. It doesn't mean I go run and buy right there. What it, what it means is now I've got to shift my mindset a little bit. Now I want to see, well, what does the next pullback look like? If it's more choppy, more more sluggish, it's likely that we're going to continue to move up. If it's impulsive down and then tries to rally, it's it's a false breakout. We're still probably in this downtrend and, and likely to keep moving down. All right. Um, now, the Dow chart is one that uh, has been, remember, this has been outperforming. Oh, actually, I wanted to go back and show you something and see if I can use my Fibonacci retracement tool. So another, another area of resistance here is this area is about a 50% retracement of this entire move down. Now, remember, the concept of the retracement is that stocks will tend to retrace about 50% of their moves. You get a big move down, it'll tend to retrace about 50% and then move down, retrace about 50%. Now, it doesn't always retrace exactly 50%. It could retrace 38.2%, um, which is a Fibonacci ratio. There's a 382, the 50%, and then the 618, 61.8%. That's that's the deepest retracement. 50% is the is the concept, and the 382 would be a little bit of a shallower retracement. So we call this the retracement zone. And I think what's interesting, I I, I noticed this yesterday was I don't I don't draw retracements all the time. Um, because usually I can kind of eyeball them, um, but all three of these indexes look like they were at these levels, and sure enough, they were. If we look at uh, the S and P, um, chart, we'll put our retracement tool on there. I'm just the, the retracement tool is right here. Let's see if it's going to cooperate with me. Uh, There we go. Oh, come on. I've had some issues with the... Let's see if I can select this area here.
might be that I haven't cleared my, they, they do updates on, on the site. And sometimes I don't clear the cache in my web browser. That's probably the case here. Anyway, um, I'll tell you what, I'm going to use my other software just real quick because it's, I just want, so we'll look at the SPX because I don't have as many lines drawn on the SPX as I do the SPY here. All right. So this is the SAP, basically SPY. Uh -oh, hold on. We're right at a 50% retracement. Uh, let me pop that in right there. So here's the 50% retracement. Um, it's basically right at that 389 area. We kind of got very close to it yesterday with that int intraday high. Now look at the um, the Dow. And the Dow is right at the 618 retracement level. I mean, a little bit above it, the intraday high today, but it closed, it, it, it hit it yesterday at the high and it's closing, it's basically trading right now, right at it. Now, what does that mean if it closes above it? If it closes above it, you gotta, it, it starts to shift the probability. It doesn't completely shift it, but it starts to shift the probability that, that maybe you're dealing with an uptrend instead of a correction within a downtrend. Um, I would probably want to see a close above the six rate retracement. I'd probably want to see a close above this high right here. Is that would put it at a higher higher high? You also have the 200 day moving average right that could be some resistance to this as well. But but I thought that was interesting that 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 was at the right at the 618. And then look at the Qs. The Qs were right at that 382 retracement level. So all three of the indexes were right. See, there's a 382. We're right at the, the retracement zone. There's the 382. So again, that's something to, to keep an eye on or pay attention to. And, and, and if it starts breaking above those levels, it's be something to pay attention to. So I'm not suggesting that it, it's it means that we have to go down. Now, another possibility here, if you want to look at a more bullish possibility here, I've, I've talked about the five waves down, and then this looking like A, B, C, and that should lead to another move down, wave C about the same length as wave A. But there's also a possibility that we have an inverse head and shoulders pattern right here. Here's the shoulder, here's the head, here's the shoulder, here's the neckline. We're breaking above that neckline right now. Could it be that we, we've we broken above the neckline with Tuesday's move? We talked about this a little bit on Tuesday as well. Um, and could this be coming back to retest that? Well, yeah, that's something to look for. If we don't drop off of this and then suddenly we spike higher again and we're breaking above those levels again, yeah, we've got we to gotta look at this as maybe more likely a bullish reversal pattern. So I'm saying we can't get too locked into analysis to where we, we ignore other possibilities. Because um, at some point, trends will tend to look more bearish than bullish or more bullish than bearish. And we can't, we can't get so locked into what we think it's going to do to where we can't recognize when it could be transitioning. Now, the biggest thing I look for is, is and the biggest thing you could learn as far as learning how to recognize this stuff is just understand that alternation between impulsive and corrective moves. Uptrend, you, your impulsive moves tend to be up. Your corrective moves tend to be more choppy, more sideways. That usually leads to another impulsive move up. And your pullbacks are more choppy. When you have a trend reversal, very often you have impulsive up, impulsive down, opposite direction, impulsive moves in the opposite direction. And then your moves are, again, your corrective moves are choppy, but now the impulsive moves are down. Your corrective moves are attempted rallies that, that are stagnant or choppy. When you get a bottom, you, you look for impulsive down, impulsive up, and then corrective, impulsive, corrective. So again, if, if, if this starts to move sideways right here, you know, this is looking kind of like, could be looking more like a stair step up and could look a little bit more bullish 
And especially if we start breaking out above these levels, you get that combination and you got to kind of flip flop a little bit. But that, by the way, that doesn't mean that I have to trade bullish if I still can't wrap my head around it yet. Um, now, a, a pure technical trader would just say, I don't care. I'm whatever it's the chart showing me to do, I'm going to do it. Um, I haven't met someone that's, that's a, that's that pure <laughs> where they, they don't have any sort of bias that, or, uh, you know, just because there's so many different variations of, of clues that you learn as a technical trader that, that uh, it, it kind of muddies the water a little bit sometimes, but, um, but it could be that I don't, tr I still don't trust the rally. The, the, the chart is saying it could keep going higher. I just don't trust the rally. So I decide not to do anything. I decide just to sit on my hands and wait um, until I'm comfortable getting in. By the way, this gets back to what I talk about all the time of having that bus stop mentality. Don't feel like every, every market day is a once in a lifetime event. If I don't buy now, I'll, I'll regret it forever. If I don't sell right now, I'm going to regret it forever. I'm never going to get another opportunity again. No, it, it, the market's going to give you endless opportunities. If you don't feel comfortable buying something on a particular day, don't buy anything. You'll get another chance to get in. Maybe you'll get in with a lot more confidence with that other, other chance, and you'll feel a lot more comfortable with that other chance. Then go ahead and wait for it. You know, um, you just can't. You can't. You, the people that treat the market like it's a once in a lifetime opportunity usually make the dumb decisions because because of that. They put that much pressure on them that they've got to get it right. And it's gonna or. They it starts to go against them, and they're and they're like, oh, I can't believe this is going against me again. I'm just going to not do anything, close my eyes, and hope it just turns around. Um, remember, this was a once in a lifetime opportunity. They, everyone was saying this is the bottom, and then they get killed uh, or they lose a lot of money. Now the market will give you plenty of opportunities. All right, um, but the Dow is. Uh, outperforming. Now we talked about this on Tuesday. It shouldn't be outperforming. The uh, the the leadership should be the Nasdaq 100 or the or the Russell 2000, and both of those are lagging. And so um, here's, here's the Nasdaq 100. It's lagging, um, and yeah, and it's probably going to continue to lag, especially with the, the the major tech earnings that have been disappointing lately. So. Um, I think that's more of a warning sign, uh, not to trust the rally. Here's the Russell 2000. Um, again, just notice how choppy this is. You know, what do we look for to a trend reversal off of the bottom? We want to see impulsive down, impulsive up, and then kind of corrective. And we've got impulsive down and then corrective. That's probably going to lead to another move down. A little bit of a bearish reversal candle today, a little indecision candle, at least as of right now. Remember, these candles can change from what we're looking at right now to, to the market close. You know, what we really care about is what they look like at the end of the day. Um, but the small caps are holding up. I mean, the Dow and the small caps are, are holding up a little bit. And the small caps are a little bit of a leadership. We, they are a leadership group. So you say, well, Dow's up, and, but the, the Russell's up. Yeah, but the chart still looks corrective. It still looks like it's um, getting ready for another move down. Um, it doesn't even have that inverse head and shoulders pattern that the other charts did. So um, it, it looks less likely. Bonds, uh, again, that's been a story. Uh, people said the reason for the rally has been the, the bond yields are coming down. I'll tell you what happened. I'll tell you what, you know, that, that could be a temporary reason. Um, by the way, remember when I had the class, I talked about all the, the, the volume right in this area here that was going into the bond market and it was going into those bond uh, ETFs. Um, it didn't react. It didn't go up immediately. We had this big drop down, but I, I think that's what we're seeing right here is a little bit of the result of that buying that was taking place right here. We'll see if that leads to a bigger rally in the bond market. Um, if, if the, I think, I think, uh, the bond market is going to wait to see what the Fed says on next Wednesday. And that's when you, 
can see whether it keeps rallying or dropping. But the thing I want to warn you about is during a normal uptrending market, normal bull market, usually there's an inverse relationship with bonds, meaning that when the market goes up, bonds are going to go down and when bonds uh, or market goes down bonds usually go up so here we're having the bond market going in the same direction as the market which is usually not not the case now this is why we don't strong we ne i never uh, draw strong comparisons to the relationship between bonds and the market because again sometimes it's trading in the same direction sometimes it's trending opposite what I would say is whatever it's doing at the time, pay attention to that. That's why we're looking at the, the high yield corporate bond chart. We never look at that, but the market's kind of focused in on, on it right now. Right now, the market is going in the same direction as bonds. The, the, the thing I'm, again, just cautioning you on is that that's not always the case. So if you're newer to trading and you're, you're establishing a strong correlation that bonds and the market are moving in the same direction, you're going to get burned at some point when it, it starts to move the opposite direction. Um, and I don't know when that'll be. Um, I, again, I'm not a, I, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I'm not a, 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 a bond stock market um, relationship expert. Um, but, uh, but I, I just wanted to point that out, that it's, it is right now correlated to that. It's not always going to be. Those bond yields have come down. Uh, a little bit of an indecision candle today, though, in, in the TLT. We'll see see if that leads anything. But from a chart standpoint, what do you have? You have impulsive down, impulsive up. What am I going to be looking for now uh, to see if this is actually a trend reversal in bonds? Well, I, I want to see on the next pullback, and this this might not be done. We might continue to move higher on this impulsive move. But on the next pullback, is it more choppy, more sideways? Now you've got, again, impulsive, corrective, impulsive down, impulsive up, and then you're getting corrective. It could mean that you're, you're starting to reverse that trend. If we have a straight move right back down again, it just it means that downtrend is, is, is likely to continue at that point. All right, um, I'm going to skip over gold. A lot of these I'm just going to reserve for the market update on Tuesdays. Uh, oil is up again. The chart on oil is looking a little bit more bullish again. The dollar, dollar has been falling. We talked about the dollar possibly being in this a bullish ABC pattern right here. We're seeing a little bit of a bullish reversal candle today. Let's see if if that starts to lead to a rally of the dollar. That's another thing that, that could be correlated to the markets right now is the dollar falling has been bullish for the markets, um, especially with some of these, these companies that do business overseas. Um, you know, the, the currency exchange is a big part of whether, you know, their earnings. And, and when you see big movements in the dollar one way or the other, it affects it could affect their earnings uh, because of that um, that exchange. This is also correlated heavily. If you're new, this is correlated heavily. This is correlated heavily with commodities. Typically, there's an inverse relationship with the dollar and commodities. So the dollar falling would be bullish for oil, bullish for gold, bullish for you know wheat and corn and other commodities. Do strong dollar would be bearish, tend to be bearish for those. Although again, oil's kind of bucked that trend a little bit um, uh, recently, but um, we'll see. Let's see if this is. There's a, there's a lot of. There was some res there was some resistance uh, support in this area right here that we kind of broke through yesterday. This is the next area of, of pretty strong support. We'll, we'll see if it, if it starts dipping below that. Now you have to start to look at maybe a trend reversal in the dollar. Um, as of right now, I'm looking at this as just a bullish ABC pattern. And right now, we'll see if that changes over the next week. And then the VIX. Okay, this is what this is what worries me. I'm going to go to the VIX chart on my other because I, I talk about the VIXY doesn't have the exact uh, numbers I, I I talk about all the time with the VIX. Um, so what worried me yesterday was remember the market had this bearish reversal yesterday 
we go to SPY. So here's where the market closed on Tuesday right here. It tried to rally all the way up here and then reversed. It came all the way down and it closed lower than where it closed the day before. So the, the market was down. S&P was down. And, more, and we need to be specific here. We're always comparing the S, SPY with the VIX because the, the VIX is measuring the, the implied volatility of S&P 500 index options. So you can't be comparing the VIX to the NASDAQ or the VIX to the Dow, okay? Um, uh, so the S&P was down, but look what the VIX did. Not only was the VIX down, the VIX was down big. It, here's where the VIX opened yesterday, here's where it closed. Whenever the VIX and the market are, and the S&P are moving in the same direction, you always want to pay attention. Doesn't mean that something dramatic is going to happen, but you got to pay attention. What does that mean? Remember, the, the VIX is measuring the, the my, my definition of the VIX. The VIX is measuring the level of freaking out by the big institutional investors. If the VIX is going down, they're more complacent. If the VIX is spiking, they're more fearful. Here we had a down day. Usually you're going to see an inverse relationship with the VIX. Almost every day you're going to see an inverse relationship. Market's up, VIX will be down. Market's down, VIX will be up. If the VIX, if the market's down and the VIX is down, what does that tell me about the big institutional traders? They're not fearful of this leading to a bigger drop. They're not worried. They don't feel the need to go out and buy protective puts to protect their stock positions. Now, you could argue, well, maybe the reason is they've already bought their protective puts. They don't have to buy anymore. Or they don't feel the need to buy anymore. Or you could view it as they don't think this is, there's going to be a big drop right here. Now, what happens if the market's up and the VIX is up on the same day? Well, usually that tells me that obviously those big institutional traders are buying because the, the market went up, but they're also buying protective puts, meaning they don't trust the rally. So when the VIX is down, the market's down, You could, if you want to oversimplify it, you could say that it's the institutional traders don't think, aren't worried about a drop right here. If the market's up and the VIX is up, it means that the, the institutional traders don't trust the rally. Okay. So implement that into your analysis all you want. The, the thing I want to point out here, though, is do not make that your entire decision. Do not base your entire decision on the VIX being up and the market up. You've got to have other analysis. So the market is looking like it could drop right here based on the chart. But again, you got to wonder why those institutional traders aren't more fearful. Now, I'll tell you right now, this VIX chart can change very quickly. I was uh, I was watching it. Um, I can't remember when it was. I think it was this day right here, where it was all the way down here, and within like in the last five minutes of the market, it came all the way back up. Um, you know, it, it, it can have these real big swings and can change very, very quickly, okay? So um, that's why you wouldn't want to base your entire decision on that. But it, it is worth asking why why aren't, why aren't isn't there more fear in the market if, if we could have a big decline right here? Um, now, it could be also that those traders don't think that anything's going to happen until next week, until the Fed meeting, or, or maybe until after Amazon and Maybe they're saying Amazon and Apple haven't reported yet, and so I don't, I don't, you know. But the, let's say the market really reacts negatively tomorrow off of their uh, Apple and Amazon earnings. But then maybe you see the big spike. That's be something to watch for, for there. But uh, it's worth noting again, the S and P down a little bit today, and the VIX is is not up. It's down. VIX is down. S and P is down. For the for basically the third straight day, um, we're we're seeing that. Um, actually, no, the other day, uh, Tuesday, the market was up and the VIX was down. That was a normal issue. The last two days, we're seeing a, an, an opposite reaction there, at least so far. Um, now, what else would I look for? Well, if we do start to decline, again, we're we're saying that this is a 
we're bumping up to the significant resistance that we'll probably end up going below this low if we start to drop again. That's at least that's what I've been saying. So if that is the case and we're headed that way, if we get a big down day up here somewhere, so if we get a day like, let's look at some of these other clients. So, so here we had this rally up, 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 and then we just dropped right there. And that was the kickoff of this move down. We had this attempted rally, and then we had this big gap down right here. It dropped us to this, those lows. If we get one of those big down days, that VIX should get back above 30. And if it doesn't, then, you know, that, that would concern me a little bit, that, especially if you had a big down day and the VIX barely moved up. Um, but this is something to just point out. This would be a bullish argument here that the, the market is, you could say, well, if you're more bullish on the market. You, again, if you go back and you're looking at that S&P chart and you're saying, nah, I think this is a, I think this is an inverse head and shoulders pattern. Maybe we start to just move sideways right here to where it looks more impulsive up and this looks corrective. And then you throw the VIX analysis in there and say, I, I think it's more likely we go up. That's something to keep an eye on. That could be pointing towards a more bullish outcome. Um, but remember, it doesn't mean we have to trade it. If you still don't trust that we're going to rally, it could rally from here. You can just sit out, not do anything. All right, um, real quickly, uh, chip stocks still showing that, that bearish divergence. They're, they're not rallying with the market. They should be leading the way. Transport, same thing. They're underperforming the Dow Industrials. We looked at that on Tuesday, and they were getting a little bit of a bearish candle today, bearish reversal candle today. Um, high yield corporate bonds are rallying, though. Okay, so this is something that you, I I would have wanted to see a more of a bearish reversal candle on that, um, and we're not. So we'll, that's something to keep it on because the market is paying attention, to that. and that might be a reason why it's holding up a little bit or it's causing the market to hold up a little bit. The Market, I told you, it's focused on this. I don't know how much longer it will be, but it, it is, and, and maybe that's what's causing people to um, not be overly bearish. They're not overly bullish, but they might cause them to be less bearish because of that. All right, so my outlook is a little bit more bearish with that analysis, leaning a little bit more to the bearish side. So it, it, we have a stock-specific class today, what would that mean? Well, I'm I'm going to go over some stocks because there there are always going to be stocks that can go up when the market goes down and have been going in the opposite direction of trend. But as I said for a while now, just because I, I talk about stocks in these classes doesn't mean that you want to be loading up on them. Um, really, you want to be in cash. If you're in, you if you're all in cash right now and you're looking for you want to have something going, you want to have something in the market, then maybe pick one of these stocks that you like the best out of them or you do a little bit more research on these because I'm not going to do any fundamental research on these. Maybe you look for one that you like fundamentally as well. And that's your trait. Okay. Um, I just, this, this class is not meant to be a load up uh, on everything I'm talking about, especially again, we're in a bear market. Market's more likely to go down. We're in a bearish trend right now. Well, very we're in a bullish, very short-term trend. We've been rallying over the last uh, um, uh, week or so. But overall, it looks like a rally within the downtrend. This is just not a time to be getting too aggressive with, um, with new trades. Um, but I could end class right now, and you, were, you, you, you listened to me all hour because you wanted a stock pick. So it is called a, a stock-specific class. So I am going to go over some potential patterns. Now, one area you can look at in a, in a market condition like this, uh, if you don't want to go through all the different sectors, and you know, obviously we, we focus on the sectors. The reason why we, we go to the sector page is that um, is that what we're uh, I need to draw an arrow there. Hold on. I don't want that either. Go to the sectors page. Uh, we're looking for the top sectors. 
So these sectors have been outperforming the market. As the market has been going down, these have been at least holding their own, if not rallying. And so, again, if you're if you're trying to pick stocks, I've talked about this a, a while now. For a while now, you want to own probably a lot of energy stocks, or or at least a few energy stocks because they're outperforming. They're more likely to go up in this in in this current environment than just about any other group. Um, but I also like to go into the muscle stock tab right here and go to the new buys. This is going to go. This is going to scan through all the different sectors, and so it's trying to find stocks that are that are outperforming in all the different sectors. You know, you, you want to stick within that. Now, now when we're in strong mark, bull market conditions, we're going to be very selective with our strength rank. We're going to be going like not, maybe down to 96. But we're going to try to stay at 98 and higher. In this market condition, we have to be a little bit, a little bit more um, selective because there's few stocks that are up at this high strength rank and, and some of them that are have, the, have are in these um, these uh parabolic moves that you don't want to go chase um so i i would say the 90 strength rank and above range is what you want to kind of stick with you don't really want to go down below 90 i've done it before i did it with aer some of the aerospace stocks were down in the high 80s but i had a you know i i just felt like you know, in fact, we'll look at some of those. They have been on a freaking tear. I told you, the world is needing weapons, and there's not enough weapons right now. And they're going to be making money for tons of money for the next several years. Um, but uh, this is an area that you can you go to this new buy list, and you can kind of go through it. And if you you click on the top stock in there, you can also create a uh, you can you could go scan down through the list here. If you go to this drop down box and select muscle stocks or muscle scans, muscle scans. And then the next drop down box, you select new buys under those muscle scans. Now, what I can do is I can just scan, I can go down through the list. I can just click this little right arrow to go down through the list. This will bring me back up the list. So the first stock in that list is LNTH. We can switch this over to signals here. Um, I don't really love that one, so let's go to the next one here. And you can just go scan through. Now I've already done this, so I'm gonna I'm gonna skip over to just the ones that that I found in this list. So you, all you're doing is going down this list. You can go go back up the list as well. So I like this uh, SRTS Census Healthcare. It's a, a, in the medical sector. But I just like the, you know, you had this impulsive move up. This is kind of, this has been the kind of corrective right through here. And you, you kind of have these bowl shaped moves right here. Now, obviously the best entry would be just to wait for a breakout. Because if it can break out of this range, it's probably gonna really take off. And it could be stuck in this range for a little while if the market continues to pull back. But, you know, I can, I can see a pretty decent reward to risk just getting a stop below the bottom of this bowl. And, you know, see how far that thing wants to go. If it comes, if it if it gets stops down below, if it stops me out, I'm probably wrong. If it gets down below this this low down here, but that's one I I liked in the list. Um, uh, this CWCO is a utility stock. Um, now, usually with this, you're, you're not only you, you kind of trading the trend, but more importantly, you're trying to capture some dividends. Um, usually they have higher, 2% two, yeah, 2 you can probably find a higher dividend stock out there. But, uh, but you know, this is, utilities will tend to outperform in bear market conditions. Uh, people are still, are they're going to pay their utility bill no matter what the market is, uh, what the economy is doing. Um, So that one was a you know if you're looking for a utility stock that was decent. None of these are really fantastic, but um, uh, uh, the next one is this TALO Talos Energy. It's an oil stock. Again, this should jump out if you're familiar with chart patterns, but 
this looks like a really distinct inverse head and shoulders. In fact, this is like a textbook head and shoulders pattern. Look at the left shoulder and the right shoulder are kind of, well, not into the exact spot, but pretty close. You got your clear, distinct neckline right here. Now, it's got a buy signal, but you might want to just wait to see if it can clear this area right here. If it can do that, the rule of thumb on an inverse head and shoulders pattern, if it breaks above the neckline, it should go up about the same distance as the base of the head to the bottom of the head right there. Now, it probably won't go, it probably wouldn't go up that far because you've got a significant resistance area right here, but it should get up to that resistance area if it breaks out. I would probably get my stop, if it does, if you're waiting for the breakout, I would, and once it breaks out, I'd get my stop down below that low right there. That'd be a good stop point because it shouldn't get back below there again. And this is an oil stock. The oil chart is looking still more bullish, so this would be one that would be a pretty good uh, uh, energy trade if you're looking to add energy. Uh, another energy one is this uh sm energy 95 strength rank same thing you see a lot of similar patterns here inverse head and shoulders pattern there's your neckline uh, another one this tgs oil and pipeline trade. This one had a what we call a, a, a ascending triangle pattern that's breaking out of today. So now on this one here, you can take the base of the triangle, project that from the breakout. That's a target area you can use. That's a really strong chart right there though. And it, it actually, it's gotten stronger. It was right at the breakout area when I first put it on the list. Now it's broken out of it. So. Good confirmation there. And it's in a good sector. Anything in oil right now is a good, probably a good uh, choice. Uh, DK, Delic Holdings, another oil. Again, same thing. Inverse head and shoulders pattern, neckline. Although it's off the highs here, that's kind of a little bit of a bearish price action. All right. Um, on the portfolio, I got out of ADM. I'm, I, you know, I could get back in it. Uh, And the reason I got out, I got out this morning was it, it was kind of similar to why I got out of uh, Northrop North Grumman. We were at the far right side of the extreme reversal risk and we had a kind of a bearish looking candle right there, shooting star candle. Same thing happened with AD, uh, with um, uh, NOC. Again, this is one I'll probably get back into again, but I thought it bearish looking market bearish reversal candle, extreme reversal risk. Let's take the gains I've gotten it. It pulls back again, we'll, we'll get back in. So I do wanna to continue to have that consumer staple exposure. I do like this sector, the agricultural sector. Um, and then I also added, um, I added the SARK. Now I told you I might be adding this pretty soon um in case the market does drop uh, what i'm looking at here on the srk is you know this is potentially a bullish abc pattern a little bit of a bullish reversal price action right here and i wanted to have a little bit of a hedge in case we drop sharply anytime tomorrow or monday or whatever um and so i i did I, I could add the SOXS as well. These are inverse ETS, meaning these are these are going to go up when the market goes down. Um, and the other one I like to use is the SOXS, which is the inverse of the chip sector. So if the chip sector starts to drop, this will go up. Now it's showing a little bit of a bullish reversal in here. But I didn't want. I don't want to add that yet. If, if we start to move down tomorrow, I'll probably jump in and add this again. And all this is designed to do is to hedge the portfolio a little bit. 
because we have these long positions. If the market goes down, these stocks go down, but then we'll make it up with these going up in value. And just it, it, what it does, it causes us to kind of stagnate a little bit. But our, our, whole, our whole goal right now is just to try to grind out some profits while we're waiting for the market to bottom. And we've done that. We've done that. We've done pretty well so far. Um, and we're going to continue just to, to do that. We look at the individual patterns here, LNG up today. I like, no reason to get out of this one. Um, MPC has a little bit of a bearish candle today, but we're not in the extreme reversal risk area there. So I'm, I'm gonna go ahead, I decided to go ahead and hang on to that one. I'm not, I, and I don't wanna be jumping in and out on just candle formations on these. Um, uh, but it, there is a chance that this could pull back a little bit. This is very short-term signal. It could just pull back a little bit over the next couple of days. My stop, I think, is all the way down here. So, you know, I don't care if it goes into a correction and a bigger correction right here or anything. It's I'm still holding on this more longer term. Now, if we did have that candle and we were at the far right side of the extreme reversal risk, I'd probably do the same thing. Go ahead and get out, take profits. And then if it does pull back, then look for another entry again or find another oil stock to jump into. Uh, tech, uh, down a little bit today, but again, no reason to get out of that one. CEIX, this is my coal exposure. It's been kind of flat the last few days, but not at a stop loss point yet. CF. Uh, this is this is forming a little bit of a look at that uh, ascending triangle pattern. If it breaks out above here, it should really take off towards these highs. And then that inverse ETF SARK. Um, I didn't want to, you know, I got out of ADM. I didn't want to add anything else. Uh, except for that inverse ETF, we're still almost a hundred thousand dollars in cash. Still, we want to mostly be in cash, especially if it looks like the market could drop a little bit. I did want to real quickly point out. So I, I am keeping an eye on NOC. Um, Northrop Grumman. Um, you can see, so we, I got out in here, I can't remember, it was one of those days, I think it's this day right here. Yeah, that was the bearish reversal candle. It was at the far right side of the extreme reversal risk. Now, it did attempt to go higher again, but look what's happening here. It did attempt to go to go back up again, and here it gapped all the way down here, and, and today it, it rallied all the way back up here, but it's it's showing buying exhaustion. It can't push any any higher than that. And so I'm kind of waiting to see if it can pull back a little bit, um, give me another entry. Although I'm telling you, these stocks have, I mean, you can see the move that one made from down here. It just took off. Remember some of the other ones I told you to, to, to that are, you know, pay attention to because of, again, all these countries that need weapons, look at, um, Lockheed Martin, look at the move Lockheed Martin's been on. Now, I, again, I wouldn't chase that move. I mean, that's massive. That's parabolic. You don't want to chase that move, but wait for the next pullback and and then get in. I mean, let, let it consolidate a little bit, but this is going to be this is going to be trending up for. It's going to be up. It's going to stair step. It's going to go back and up and down, but it should be trending up for the next few years with all that demand out there. And as long as they manage their, you know, business right, which usually the defense stocks do a pretty good job of that. Um, General Dynamics was another one I said to, to keep an eye on. It's had a 92 strength rank. Look at that run. So the point I'm making is you have to have a bus stop mentality. I'm going to, yeah, I missed that move maybe, but I'm going to get another chance, wait for it to pull back, and then give you a sign that's starting to move up again, and then jump in and ride it back up. 
All right. That's all I have. Um, real quickly here, let's take a look at um, yeah, S and P's at the lows of the day. What does the Dow look like? Does it still look like it's coming off the highs? Yeah, Dow's no. So the Dow Dow is forming a more of a uh, shooting star candlestick formation. If it closes like this, that'd be pretty pretty bearish, at least in the near term. Doesn't necessarily mean it's starting a bigger move down, but it should open lower tomorrow based off of that candle form. If it holds, it's off the lows a little bit. It would need to close right at the lows of the day to really be an effective shooting star candlestick formation. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, so again, Apple and Amazon earnings after the bell today. Um, Fed meeting next Wednesday. Jobs report next, not this Friday, next Friday. Who knows? There might be something else mixed in there that I'm missing as well. But um, a lot of things that could be driving driving the markets over the next week. All right. Have a great week, everyone. See you next Tuesday for the next market update. Bye now.